So this is for a cooldown called graduate debt. And we've been talking about two-way frequency tables. And what we can do is we can use a two-way frequency table in a couple of different ways to find percentages in a couple of different ways to highlight different quantities. We can look at categories with rows or columns or even just look at the entire data set. So let's take a look at an example here. This, um, this down here is some data that was collected for a sunny day versus snowy day and how many snow cones were sold. What we can do is we can look at sunny days by themselves and find the percent with fewer or more than 50 cones. And then we could look at snowy days by themselves and look at fewer or more than uh, 50 cones sold and see if there's some sort of a relationship. Now looking at this though, on a sunny day, you're much more likely to sell 50 cones or more. On a snowy day, you're more likely to sell less than 50 cones. That right there shows us a significant difference. We don't even have to find a percentage to see that. But let's say we did find a percentage. Looking at this, our 100% category is just for sunny days. Our 100% here is just for snowy days. And we can see the percent is much higher on a sunny day for 50 cones or more compared to a snowy day, which has a much higher percent with fewer than 50 cones. And uh, we could also look at percentages that way. I don't know if that would be super helpful in this case. Probably not. Um, so let's look at the cooldown here for a minute. Table summarizes data about the median debt for graduating students from a sample of universities in California and New York. Is there an association between the state and the amount of median debt for graduates? Explain your reasoning. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to compare New York universities to California universities. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to figure out what percent of students who went to California universities had median debt less than 9,000 or at least 9,000. And then we're going to do the same thing for New York universities. We're going to get percent from California with less than 9,000 and then percent from New York universities with less than 9,000. If those percentages are similar to each other, then we would say there's no difference between going to a California versus a New York university. Now, if you find out that the percent of students with debt less than 9,000 in California universities is like 30%, and New York universities is like 50%, then you could see that by going to a New York university, you're more likely to have debt less than $9,000. So that's what you want to do. You want to look at each row individually since we're comparing California and New York universities to each other. If you have any questions, I have a longer, more detailed video in this playlist that you could go check out. Um, but I realized the, the video that I had before didn't clearly give good enough direction on this particular cooldown. So I hope that helps. If you have more questions, check out that longer video, or you can go talk to your teacher or me, Mr. Van, if you have questions.